Right, let's get to the tweets. Craig, your goal against Norway at the World Cup in 1998 remains the last go goal scored by a Scottish player at a major tournament. Could you ever have imagined back then that it would take over two decades for Scotland to have another meaningful tournament run? Has that tweet just come in because somebody knew that Jan was on and being Norwegian just to sort of rub it in a little I bit? I imagine so. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, no, I couldn't have. Well, you know, for one, you know, I, I thought I'd have played another major tournament, but we didn't get to the Euros uh, in 2020 because we lost to England in a, in a two two game playoff. Uh, and then we failed to qualify for the World Cup in 2002. But things started to, to deteriorate, but in terms of the squad, but I didn't think uh, that that would be the last goal for sure. It's been it's been such a long time, but I tell you what, it was the most enjoy. I don't know. I was trying to think, Ellen. Why, Jan? Why were you not at that World Cup for Norway? You're not. You're not that old. No, we 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 had a so good team that we beat Brazil later in that World Cup, so they didn't need need me. Apparently, <laughs> I was uh, fortunate to be in USA in 1994. When, when that was the first time we qualified since 1938. So for Scotland, been out of it for 22 years. Well, come to Norway and I will tell you about, about it. We haven't been to, to a tournament since the European Championship in 2000. So two countries here now at extra time are not very used to being at uh, a big tournament lately. The thing is as well, Dan, yeah, the was, next uh, one second. The thing is as well, I was looking at that from that game. And uh, you know, I tell the story about Frode Grodas a uh, big friend of mine uh, about coming off his line but I was looking at that Norwegian team as well that was a very good Norwegian team I know he was a bit of a super sub but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was on the bench for that Norwegian side that day Tor Andre I think it was was it Tor Andre or Havard Flo played up front but he was in the peak of his career Solskjaer at Manchester United and he was he was on the bench for that Norway side so it was, uh, you know, two decent sides, I've got to say, back in the day. Imagine beating Brazil and still getting knocked out at the group stages. How, how big a dagger is that? Well, that's wrong. You have to Google better, my friend, because we beat Brazil 2-1 and then we lost after the group stages against Italy. Oh. But you're right, the, the, the oh, strikers no. who came after me in Norway, we had a fantastic generation of players. So I was playing there and suddenly these young players come in. Tor Andre Flo who went to Chelsea. You had Jon Kareb who went to English football, did well there, did well in Valencia and so on and so on. And you had Ole Gunnar Solskjaer who hardly could get games in the Norwegian national teams. And so we had some good... And Stefan Iversen going to Tottenham. So there was a good generation coming after me. So I guess I'm glad that I played some, some years before. Craig knows everything about that game. He rewatches it pretty much daily. Oh, there's my goal again. Look, there's my goal. The family. Do you know, I got that. Do you know, just briefly, I got that wrong because, and I did get it wrong about Norway not getting out, but it was Morocco I was feeling sorry for. Because you imagine Morocco, they gave us a hammering 3-0. Uh, uh, and that was the game that I got sent off. And then, can you imagine <laughs> finishing the game to be told that Norway have beaten Brazil <laughs> and you're not going to go through. I mean, just just quite incredible. You can imagine the hatred for Brazil and Morocco. <laughs> but when I when I grew up, Craig, I, we were big fans of Scottish players, and I, I remember the fantastic game in '78 when you beat Holland with Archie Gemmel's famous goal. So I guess you can compare the Norway and Netherlands or Holland. Uh, we we did well, and you you were devastating. I could, I can't remember that. But for us beating Brazil, I be won one off, and it was on a midsummer day in Norway, and that was the first time that also looked like Rio after the game. Right, let's keep the theme of the World Cup going, Jan. What's your favourite memory from 1994? Well, I think for for a Norwegian, and if some, I come from a very small village of 900 people, and with, when someone told me that I'm going to play in the Bundesliga or Premier League, that I will, I will ask, I will. I will ask them, are you mad? And, and to qualify for Norway, we are a ski nation, although we love our football. And we were in a group with, with Holland, with Poland and England. That was, the, that was the Graham Taylor year. Do I not like that year so Graham Taylor? And for us just to come to the World Cup, it was like unbelievable. And maybe when we got there, that took us a bit because that was, a, that, was that World Cup. But it was so warm, it was heating, there was the humidity, it was unbelievable in Washington and New York. And, and somehow our way of playing 
was a bit uh, wasn't it suited for that kind of, of of games and but still it was it was the highlight of my career playing at the World Cup for your country we beat Mexico in the first uh, game and uh, we had a small goalkeeper the Mexican goalkeeper Jorge Campos so I remember at the press conference I had like 600 Mexican journalists asking me what do you think about Jorge Campos all the time all the time and it was a standing joke in Norway and by the way he was good he stopped the volley from me and I could have scored the first goal for Norway like for 100 years and he stopped it a great goalkeeper the little fellow Jan, who is the modern day version of Vinnie Jones? And has anyone had the experience of playing against him? I played against Vinnie Jones and, uh, and he scared <laughs> out of me. It was like unbelievable. I, he, I remember he just went into my face and did all his uh, body language kind of things. I think that you can say Vidal is one of the guys. Um, maybe Rice at West Ham. I don't know. Ask Craig. He was that kind of player himself. Uh, uh, well, I wasn't, wasn't quite as dirty as Vinny. I played with and against Vinny. Uh, uh, but he was the type of player, if you stood up to him, then you would get his respect. If he thought if he thought for one second that you were scared of him, then that was it. It was over. I remember him kicking... I've told you this story, Dan. I remember him uh, kicking Gavin Peacock in the backside when we were waiting to go out the tunnel at Selhurst Park. He gave him a right crack with the toe of his boot just before we went out and said to him, you're going to get more of that when the game starts. And, and the game started and, you know, it got in Gavin's head a little bit because Gavin wasn't that kind of guy. He was a very quiet, uh, quiet person. But th those kind of players are few and far between now. You know, Vinny played the hard man, but I can tell you off the field, he, he was a hard guy and I've said that to you before. And he's actually doing very well for himself now. A lot better than, than our, our own in-house in actor, Frank LaBeouf. Vinny's actually <laughs> in Hollywood. <laughs> but, but I think it's a, it's a fair point, Craig, because I think that type of player, you would love to have them in your team. And uh, you have you, you will compare him with midfielders, of course, but you have a guy like Sergio Ramos, who plays for Real Madrid, which is the key to see, to, to, to the way they play. That, that I mean, the Liverpool fans will hate me now, but they, they would also love to have a Ramos in their team. I mean, that, that kind of winning mentality. And I agree with Craig. Vinny Jones has done well for himself. He did what he was allowed to do. I mean, the referees had to stop him, didn't they? And we remember uh, one of my former managers, Steve McMahon, who played for, for Liverpool and that famous tackle after like a few seconds, I guess it was at Wembley, that famous FA Cup final. And Vinny Jones did well for himself, did well for himself at Wimbledon, did well for himself at Leeds. And we can, we can try to portray him like only a, a, a madman, but he was also a very important player for, for the team, teams he played for. Okay, next question. Uh, <laughs> Jan, how surprised are you that your former club, Sheffield United, have a good chance of reaching the Champions League? Well, I always make a live update on the United table as long as Sheffield are in front of Manchester. So I always do that. <laughs> and uh, some months ago, I went back. Chris Wilder is there. He's a diehard Sheffield United fan and also a, a great manager. I had a wonderful time at, at Bramall Lane scoring goals for fun together with Brian Dean and I got great memories from there but it was great to come back and, and Chris invited me t talking about his philosophy and somehow it's easy to put, put Chris Wilder in a, uh, in, in a place where people say he's just like an old kind of British manager. This guy is also a very modern coach and the way, the way they've done this season is unbelievable and a lot of people worrying that Liverpool, if, if the season would have been void, that their like performance would, would have been devaluated. But I also see that Sheffield United is good for them if the season ends, or although the position they have now is good. But I just don't want the season to end because I want to see them ahead of Manchester United to win the United internal table of Jan Ogefjortov. So you hate Manchester United, Jan? <laughs> Not at all. But from all United, you know, United people, they are walking around always say, United, I support United. Okay, do you support Leeds United or Sheffield United? How did you get that brand? Okay, winning all the titles in the world makes it a bit easier, but I, I love Sheffield United. I don't hate. Hate has nothing to do with sport. I just love Sheffield United. <laughs> Jan, is there a current Bundesliga club that could be on the verge of becoming a new power via signings or new ownership or a new manager or a new stadium? 
Oh, it's a good question. I mean, uh, well, as you know, there, there is a 51 rule in Germany. That means that you can't get a, a guy from uh, America or the Arabs to ju ju just buy them. They have to be, uh, you, so you can't put that in to, to them, to their system. Like they tried in Berlin, that didn't succeed, even when I took a guy from, although he's a German coming from USA, and Jürgen Klinsmann. So who could that be? I, I would love to say Eintracht Frankfurt, because Eintracht Frankfurt is, is based in a finance metropole, my former club, as you see the shirt behind me here. And uh, I, if, if they get the money, they, they have sure have the uh, human, uh, the people, the human resources behind them. And it, it is a place, it's a very important city now for, for Europe. After London and, and the UK decide to go out of, of Europe, I mean, they could be a, the main metropole of, of Europe. So I would love to see my club go in there. And, uh, and do well for them. Eintracht Frankfurt, very good organized, great uh, head of sport in Freddy Bobic, and, and Adi Hütter is also a, a great coach. Uh, this, is, this is about Eintracht Frankfurt. It's from some, someone who works at ESPN, actually. Costa is a big fan, saying, uh, Jan Alfjortov, welcome. I'm sure this will not be the last time you'll have to talk about this. May the 29th, 1999, the most dramatic relegation battle in Bundesliga history. Does any day come even close as the best moment in your playing career? Uh, you, of course, scored the goal, which meant Eintracht Frankfurt weren't relegated, Jan. There are some great players that they can brag about their titles and uh, I have to brag about saving clubs uh, going down. But yeah, it was a fantastic day because uh, the drama was unbelievable. We were winning the last four games of the season and before the, the last game we, we, we thought we needed a draw. But then every result in the world went against us and it ending up that we had to beat Kaiserslautern, who were then with Balak and Otto Rehagl as their coach, trying to get into Champions League, and we ending up beating the 5-1. And at 4-1, we needed another goal to somehow uh, get on better goal difference, more score goals than Nürnberg. And as I said after the game, then I just had to, to make one. And that was in the 90th minute. And I did uh, a bit funny over uh, an Übersteiger, what they say in, in Germany, a trick that I, I did as a kid. So yeah, it was a great, great day and it was five fantastic goals and, and day, day to remember. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons I do a lot of work in Germany. That's how it goes. I remember Armstrong scoring for Northern Ireland in 1982 World Cup and he had a great life uh, working with Spanish football. So I, I, I guess it's, it's the same for me that day. Craig scored for Scotland and they sent him over here. You can make, make what you want of that. <laughs> uh, Craig, which one striker would you choose from Jamie Vardy, Raul Jimenez or Tammy Abraham? Uh, well, I would drill young Tammy Abraham out for starters, although he's, he's, he's done, he did particularly well up until the point the season was closed. In fact, he did better than I expected and a lot of people expected stepping up uh, from uh, his loan spells in the Championship to the Premier League. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of the physicality and the, the movement of, of Raul Jimenez and I think he's probably going to go to another club, a bigger club, uh, and there'll be a few suitors out for him. But I think just for the fact he's done it uh, from non-league football basically to the Premier League to international football and winning a league, I think Jamie Vardy's done a heck of a well for himself and so if I wanted to stick the ball in the back of the net at the moment, I, I would probably go for Jamie Vardy. Final question. Did you have any nicknames as players? Craig, you were, you were Butler, yeah? When you used to play with uh, Lambert? Yeah, when I played with Paul at Celtic in, in Scotland, it was uh, Butler after Lambert and Butler the, uh, the cigarettes. And when I was at Chelsea, you'll be not be surprised to know... <laughs> My nickname was Mr. Angry. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, Jan, what was your nickname? Well, when I came to Sheffield United, I played my first game uh, against Swindon away. And the chairman came into the dressing room. I'd never seen him before. And he said, I hear you are a lazy said, well, it's too late now. You just spent a lot of money buying me. So, But that didn't stick. Uh, uh, when we have in the Norwegian languages, we have uh, three letters that you don't have. We have an A, an Ø, and an O, and I have all two of them. So you can imagine when I came to England, there were all kind of 
nicknames for me. There was Four Tuft, Show Tuft, Airplane, Air Tuft, Norwegian Air, everything. So everything with a Norwegian uh, that that stuck. And uh, Mr. Angry, he had his name, and I just now see how I appreciate that tweet from him today. So I, I guess I will have to be prepared for some other tweets. Hey, I'm just hoping our bleep, uh, I'm just hoping our I'm just hoping our bleep machine's still working. Otherwise, this could be yes, the, this, could be two, this could be two, this could be two shows for Jan. He's tell, first and he's last. Tell me about the rules. I know, I know. Jan's first show and he's already broken the swearing record on extra time. Uh, it's quite impressive, Jan. Thank you very much. Thanks to Craig as well. Uh, more from us tomorrow, of course. Until then, goodbye. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.